NFL panel is here. DraftKings contributors Julian Edlow and Gary and Thorne. Guys, we got rookie futures and props available now on the DK Sportsbook for the upcoming NFL season. The draft is over, so let's get your take on the newly posted Offensive Rookie of the Year odds. Trevor Lawrence, the obvious favorite at plus 300, but do you think he's the best bet right now? What do you think, Jules? Uh, I don't think he's the best bet. I think he's a very realistic option. Um, and we've seen, you know, a, a Herbert come through in recent years, a Kyler Murray come through in recent years. Um, although Burrow was actually the first pick in that last draft. So any of these QBs at the top of the board are a fine bet. Like if they have a solid season and get a team to the postseason, like those are the ways that you would win it. But for me, I'm looking more at a guy in Najee Harris who has soared up the board. I think he was closer to plus 2,000 when these opened. He's now plus 1,000. I think he can have something close to a Saquon Barkley type of rookie year uh, within that Pittsburgh offense. I think he's going to get the ball a lot. They didn't draft a a workhorse running back in the first round not to do that. I think he's going to be very involved in the running game, very involved in the passing game, just as he was at Alabama. Um, He's an absolute beast. If Harris can stay healthy for the whole season – I see no reason why he can't be that type of Saquon Rookie of the Year award winner over a guy like Baker Mayfield back in that season a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, Mike Tomlin definitely going to need to get the run game going considering Ben Roethlisberger's arm almost fell off. Uh, Gary, where are you going to go? Do you think that Trevor Lawrence is the best bet right now? Do you like somebody else? I mean, I think Trevor Lawrence is going to win this award. Um, so I guess three to one. And he's the best bet. Terrible odds. Um, but I, I think if you are looking for value, uh, you know, if Lawrence is to get hurt or maybe he just isn't the guy we think he is. Um, I, I'm with Jules. I think Najee Harris is a great bet. Um, if you look at the Steelers history, they tend to use single back systems when they have someone as talented as Harris. Uh, and if that ends up playing itself out, I mean, especially with now a 17 game regular season schedule, like, you know, Harris could rack up, 1500 all-purpose yards or something along those lines and it would be hard to not give it to a running back on a successful team if, if that were the case uh there are some concerns with that offensive line but still i think harris at 10 to 1 is is really nice value and i would also say uh it, it's interesting to note zach wilson uh we answered this exact same question after day one of the nfl draft and wilson was 10 to one he is now seven to one which makes a lot more sense i don't know why he was 10 to one right off the bat because of the four quarterbacks five if you want to include mac jones he's really one of two who you can guarantee is starting week one and that's such a big part of this award is just sheer volume so the fact that he's still got the fourth longest odds of any quarterback despite the fact that The Jets have invested heavily inside the top 15 in that offensive line. Uh, They signed Corey Davis. They took Elijah Moore. Like, there's weapons right now for the Jets. He's in a big market. If if he does anything remotely above average, he's going to get a lot, a lot of press and a lot of just notoriety for this particular award. Okay, here's an interesting prop you can find under NFL offseason specials. So week one starting quarterback, for the 49ers, Jimmy G is minus 305 to be under center at the start of the season. Trey Lance is plus 250. Gary Ann, could Lance be the man in San Fran? He will be, uh, maybe like week five, week six. Uh, this is just a no bet because obviously you're not putting minus 305 on Jimmy Garoppolo. Uh, he could He could lose this job over the course of the summer. He could also get hurt. Uh, that, is, that is something that could definitely happen. But I think barring injury and barring some sort of like catastrophic space jam esque loss of his talent. You have to start Garoppolo week one. I mean, we all know that Lance is incredibly talented. He's toolsy to kind of like steal a baseball term for football uh, prospect analysis. But this is someone who throughout his entire college career through 318 passes to put that in perspective, Trevor Lawrence threw over 1,100 times at Clemson. Like, he just needs some seasoning. So I think he'll start sometime in his rookie season, but it's not going to be week one. All right. Uh, What do you think here, Jules? Uh, Could Lance be the man in San Fran? Long-term, yes. Just like Garyan said, I think if the 49ers have it their way this season, they're a playoff team with Jimmy Garoppolo, and Lance isn't starting until uh, whatever that would be, 2022. Um, 
this team went to the Super Bowl, uh, you know, a year before they had all those devastating injuries last year. So uh, I, I will bet this. These are new markets, and we're actually adding, you know, more teams are coming up today as we're seeing. Jimmy Garoppolo right now, I'm seeing minus 278. I will, I will bet that. I will lay minus 278 on Jimmy Garoppolo to be the week one starter. The only way you don't get it is a devastating preseason injury, which given Jimmy Garoppolo's injury history, uh, San Francisco is going to do everything they can to, to protect that from happening. Um, so I would be stunned. Like if you wanted to hedge it up, I'm, I'm so, you know, Lance is a great prospect, but he is long-term. He needs to learn. There's no way they start him week one. So if you wanted to hedge up, Josh Rosen is plus 3,300. Nate Sudfeld is plus 4,000. You can put tiny, tiny splashes on those guys. They would start either one of those guys over Trey Lance in week one. I'm 100% positive of that. If Garoppolo hurt a knee in preseason or anything, it's it's not going to be Lance week one. It might not be Lance till 2022. Wow, 100% positive. Love the confidence. Uh, the same prop is available for the Bears week one starter. Andy Dalton is the favorite at minus 167. Justin Fields a close second at plus 160. Jules, who do you think has the better shot of being under center in week one here? So this one's a appropriately priced i would say um it should be dalton should be the favorite and he's minus 167 that that feels about right uh justin fields plus 160 intriguing he, like like how gary and said lance might be starting in week five like i don't see that in san francisco that's probably going to be the plan in chicago in chicago like october we are going to see justin fields as the bears starting quarterback the question is, is he good enough to steal that job over the summer and, and just get it week one? Um, or is Andy Dalton bad enough at this point to, to lose it? And I think those are realistic outcomes. So uh, Dalton's probably the plan. I would probably bet him, but I do think Fields can come in and swoop it. This one, this one would be one that I would lay off. And so I'll just say really quick, like in this morning, I think Cam Newton, the Patriots market was added uh, on DK Sportsbook. This is another one like Jimmy G. Cam Newton minus 286. Juicy, juicy, juicy. I will lay it off. Cam Newton is starting week one for the Patriots. I'm 100% positive. They do not want Mac Jones in there. And Bill Belichick hates Jarrett Stidham, who's still on the roster. He's not going to use him. If he didn't use him last year when Cam was spiking it into the dirt, he's not going to use him this year. Cam Newton minus 286 and Jimmy Garoppolo minus 278. Super juicy. Give them both to me. I wish I could parlay him. Wow. Gary, and how do you feel? Yeah, like Jules, I'm, I tend to be pretty conservative about just the veteran quarterback is probably going to be the one who starts week one. Um, however, this is priced at a point where I think I'm willing to put a sprinkle on Justin Fields to be the week one starter. Because again, Andy Dalton is not someone who exactly exudes confidence uh, from football fans and football coaches alike. Um We know what the Bears quarterback situation is. Uh, I think they're desperate for a spark. I think that the front office just gave out a lot of draft capital and, you know, they're, they're definitely kind of managing for their jobs at this point. So they could look to Justin Fields and say, Hey, this guy's got to be the savior literally for our employment. And we're going to put him out there and see what happens. Um, I think it's also worth noting that unlike the San Francisco situation where you've got someone like Jimmy Garoppolo, you have the incumbent, who's been in Kyle Shanahan's system for the past three years, Andy Dalton was a free agent. Like it's, it's not right. like he has built up all this like capital with the bears and, and the bears coaching staff. Like they're both going to start fresh week one of, of preseason. And I think there's a decent chance that fields beats him out for this job. Nick Foles plus 900. Oh. <laughs> He's the only one we just said, you know, Jimmy and cam in those systems last year, Foles is the bears returning quarterback. I think he's just there to look pretty. I agree. Uh, all right. You both agree on that one. All right. Some player totals are up now as well. For the rookies, Atlanta tight end Kyle Pitts is expected to make an immediate impact in that Falcons offense. Uh, his receiving yards total for the next season is set at 800 and a half. You see him going over or under that, Garyan? I'm going to take the under. Again, it's the conservative route. Um, I love Kyle Pitts. I don't think he's like, almost properly classified as a tight end. Like he is a special talent, but at the same time, we have seen it takes a little bit 
of seasoning with these rookie tight ends before they have a massive impact. And even like when I say massive impact, we kind of have to put into perspective what an offensive impact, particularly in receiving yards, is for an NFL tight end. I know the calculations here are a little off now because we're talking about a 17-game season. But last year, only two tight ends had more than 800 receiving yards, and it was Travis Kelsey and Darren Waller. So this is already a prop that not many, quote unquote, above average tight ends, veteran tight ends in the NFL would go over. So with Julio Jones still on this roster as of right now, I'm going to take the under. All right, Julian, are you going to be conservative and take the under too? I'm not going to take the under. I want to take the over, but I can't do it yet. Like, this is one that I'm going to watch over the summer. Um, First and foremost, obviously, the Julio situation. If Julio does wind up gone, that tells us a lot. Like, Ridley is going to be option one, and Pitts will step right in and be the second option in that offense. Uh, Garion made really good points about the tight end position and about rookie tight ends. I just think that Pitts is number one, more of a receiver and number two, more of a generational once every 10 to 20 years in the draft type of tight end prospect that uh, is, is ready to go. Like, I I think that he's ready to, to compete week one on an NFL level and, and capable of having big games. So this is one, maybe as the season gets closer, I would take a look at the over if Julio's gone, I'm in get the over as quick as you, as quick as you can. And that's something that could happen in June, July, August. So we'll see. I don't, it's nothing for me right now. I lean over. I think that Pitts is going to be a massive piece of this offense. 